Let's make bricks and build a great city with a tower that stretches into the sky. Thereby shall we stay in one place and be safe in our land. These men are building a great city. This city will bring them power, and soon they will be able to do anything that they desire to. I must prevent this. Now they are scattered, they cannot have power upon me. I shall hereby name this city Babylon, for I have confused the people about their own language and sent them all over the earth. Abram, my son, I am leaving Ur in Babylonia. Come with me and take your wife Sarai, who cannot produce children. I will also take my grandson, Lot. We shall go to the land of Canaan. I can go no further. We must stop here, in the land of Haran. Leave this land. I will show you a new country where you can be free. I will bless you and curse those who curse you. You shall have many descendants, and your name shall be known throughout the earth. Come, Sarai and Lot, we are to leave this land now. This is the land of Canaan. You shall dwell here and survive in this land. There is famine in this country. We should travel south to Egypt, but you are too beautiful. The people of Egypt will believe that you are my wife and try to kill me to marry you. So tell them that we are siblings. Sir, there are three people here to enter our land. Two men and one beautiful woman, who seems to be the older man's wife. Bring her to me! Are you the wife of the man who came with you? No, I am his sister. Very well, you shall be mine. These animals are yours, as you have been such a great man in my land. You shall be cursed, for you have taken the wife of Abraham. Why did you tell me that she was your sister? You are hereby banished from Egypt. Uncle, I now have a family and plenty of animals, and our slaves are quarrelling in our pastures. You are my nephew. Our people should not be fighting. We cannot remain so close to each other, or the fighting will worsen. So we must part. Choose one direction in which to live, and I shall choose the other. I choose to live across the entire Jordan Valley, to the east. There there is water enough to sustain my animals, and land enough to keep them upon. Then I shall live west of here. Look about in every direction from where you stand, for all the land that you see is to be yours. You will have so many descendants that they will utterly fill the earth, and they must spread over the whole earth. Thus, I must give it to you. Abraham, your nephew Lot is taken in a great battle between the kings of Babylonia, Alessa, Elam, Goim, and the kings of Sodom, Gomorrah, Admeh, Zeboim, and Bela. He is yet alive, but captured by the allied forces of Babylonia, Alessa, Elam, and Goim. We must retrieve him. I shall gather every man fit to fight in my land, and we shall together destroy those who have taken my nephew. My name is Melchizedek. I am a priest of our Lord God. I am here to announce that you shall be blessed for your noble efforts in battle.
Do not fear, Abram. You shall no longer be in danger of anyone on this planet, and I shall give you a fitting reward for everything that you have done in your life. But, my lord, you did say that I would have many descendants, yet that is not possible, for my wife cannot produce children. Currently, one of my slaves is to inherit my land, not a man of my own bloodline. Come with me. Look at the stars. You will have as many descendants as there are lights in the night sky. But I must tell you the truth of the matter. For four hundred years your descendants will be poorly treated, kept as slaves in another land. When they leave, they will be prosperous and wealthy. You shall not suffer your son's fates. You shall live to an old age and die in peace. Once your descendants return to this land, I promise to give them all of the earth, from the borders of Egypt to the river Euphrates. The Lord God has not allowed me to produce children. If what he told you is true, and it must be so, then you must have a child with my slave, Hagar, instead. Since the news of Hagar's pregnancy met her ears, she has thought of herself as superior to me. She now hates me because of what you have done. Only the Lord can tell which one of us did the right thing. Very well. Hagar is your slave, not mine. Do what you will with her. Hagar, slave of Sarai, where is it that you are travelling to or from? Away from Sarai, for she has been cruel to me. Go back to her and be her slave. I will reward you with many descendants. You are to name your first son Ishmael, because the Lord knows what you have suffered. Your son will be hated by everyone and shall hate everyone. He is not to live with his family. I am the Lord God. I shall change your name to Abraham, for you shall be the ancestor of many nations. You shall be the father of the kings and their citizens. Every man that follows in your line shall own this land in which you live. But you must keep a promise with me. I only ask that you circumcise every male among you. Every boy at eight days old, even the slaves, must be circumcised. This shall be the sign of our covenant. Any man who has not kept this promise will not be considered a descendant of yours, and shall not inherit the wealth and power that is set out for all that come after you. Your wife is no longer named Sarai, but Sarah, for I am to bless her, and you are to have many descendants with her. Is it possible for a man at the age of one hundred to have a child with a woman at the age of ninety? Why can I not simply have Ishmael as my heir? No, you shall have a child with Sarah, and you shall call him Isaac. Only he shall be the descendant of the kings. I have heard your request regarding Ishmael, so I shall make a great nation out of his descendants. But I shall only keep my covenant with Isaac, who is to be born in one year. Gentlemen, do enter my home. You look to have been travelling for a while. I shall bring you food and water, and you may rest for a while under the sacred tree of Mamre. Thank you. Where is your wife, Sarah? She is in the tent. I must inform you that in nine months she shall give birth to a boy. Ha! Huh, this cannot be true. I am too old to produce a child, and so is my husband. Why do you laugh? Am I not the Lord? There is nothing that I cannot turn to truth. Abraham, I have heard great accusations about the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. They have sinned too much, and I must decide what it is that I should form from their fate. But, my Lord, what if there are fifty innocent men in the cities and the rest are guilty? Would you then kill all the innocent, alongside the guilty? No, Abraham. If that were so, I would leave the city peacefully, no matter how many men have sinned within its walls. Do excuse me for still speaking, but what if there are only forty-five innocent? Still, I would spare the whole city just for the forty-five. What about only forty? I would do the same as I have already said. Please, my lord, hold your anger, but I must speak again. What if there is to be only thirty? Once again, the whole city would be spared. I apologize for my continuance to speak, but I must again. What if you find only twenty innocent people in the city? I would let the guilty go free for the sake of those twenty. I only need to speak once more. What if there are only ten innocent men in the city? Would you destroy it then? It would go unharmed.
Sirs, you were in my land, so it is my duty to serve you as best I can. Please, come to my house. There you may rest. No, we will sleep in the city square. I insist you must stay at my house. I will get my slaves to prepare a dinner for us. Sir, the men of Sodom have surrounded the house. They wish to rape the angels. I will do what I can to get them to leave. Men of Sodom, do not do a thing to these men. If your desire is too great, then I have two daughters who should suffice. Move aside. You aren't from this land, so you will not tell us what to do. If they won't come out, then we must take them. I have made the men blind. They will not find the door. Gather all of your relatives and leave the city, for it is to be destroyed. Leave now. Do not turn to look at the city or stop within the valley. Get into the hills so that you can survive. But the hills are too far. I am not fast enough to outrun this disaster. There is a small city named Zoar nearby. Let me go there instead. Of course, but you must hurry. I cannot destroy this city until you have reached Zoar. The mother turned to look at the destruction. The man said not to do so. She is now a pillar of salt. We should not stay here for too long. I suggest that we go into the hills where the angel told us to go. We can stay in a cave for a while. Our husbands died in the city, and now there are none who we can have a child by. I say we let our father drink wine, and when he is drunk, I can sleep with him to have a child by him. Last night I did what I had intended. Now you can do the same tonight. This is my son Moab, and this is my son Ben-Ami.